Our God is faithful. He's faithful. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. If you would like, I want to introduce to you the newest, I guess, but it would be the newest member of uh, Faith Assembly. We have Jax over there holding his mother. <laughs> Everybody, I don't know if you can see him or not. You don't have to stand up, but, uh, but y'all just, would you give them a hand today? Or you don't have to. You don't have to stand up. Look at that precious baby. <laughs> Doing the Lion King hold. <laughs> it's great to have Jax in service. Kind of went through a little bit of complications this past week, um, but doing wonderful. And we're so happy that, that he's here and that he brought his mama as well. Amen. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Well, Jesus is coming back. He is. That's the story that we're telling right now. Maybe, uh, Scott, if you just maybe take me out of the monitors just a little bit. I'm getting a kind of a muffled sound up here to me. I don't know if y'all can hear it or not, but um, these are just little bugs we'll have to work out. It's fine. But Jesus is coming back. He is. Uh, that's, that's the message, that's the ending message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We got the birth and the life and the death and the resurrection. And now the second coming. <laughs> the rapture of the church. It's coming. It is. It's closer now than it ever has been. He's on his way. You know, the thing about it is, is, that the, is, is that Jesus doesn't even know. The Bible says that even Jesus himself does not even know the day or the hour. Only God the Father. When he gives that nod to Jesus, and he says, Son, go get your bride, then he's on his way. Amen. You know, if you were to ask some of your friends, you know, we, we live in a... Really, the nation and the world that we live in today, and especially our nation uh, th that we live in, is becoming more and more unchurched. It's not like it was when, when you were a kid. It's not like it was when I was a kid. You know, at least my friends, you know, they, they, uh, for, for, the, for the most part, everybody knew what church was. And, and, and to a degree, they kind of respected the church. You know, used to, you could leave the church's doors unlocked. <laughs> you know, on a, on a Sunday. In fact, I remember being on staff at First Assembly years ago. We would leave the church completely unlocked on Sunday, all day on Sunday afternoon. Well, that's crazy. You know it? Now, when I was on staff at Mary and First Assembly, we had a guy going around. <clears throat> and they later, they caught him. But you know what he did? He pulled up in a van walked right into First Baptist in Marion, asked the person, where's your, uh, can you take me to the sanctuary of your soundboard? I'm here to work on your soundboard. He went, went up to the soundboard, unplugged it, broad daylight. Staff was there, everybody was there. Nobody said anything. Unplugged the soundboard, loaded it up, put it in, the, put it in his van and took off. Went to another church, did the same thing. <laughs> can you believe that? That's just the world that we live in. Did it in broad daylight. Don't even care. No respect. For the most part, you know, the churches have thousands, tens and thousands, even sometimes even hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of property on there. It's a big target. And people are so unchurched. If you were to ask them today, about the Lord coming back, some, some, many people would say, what, what are you talking about? That's how unchurched we, have, uh, we are in this nation. Many people don't even know the meaning of going to church. They think we're some kind of right-wing fanatics. Okay. <laughs> I'll be a right-wing fanatic, I guess. <laughs> I'll be a religious nut, whatever they want to call me. It doesn't matter. But here's a simple fact. We're living in a nation that's dying, and they don't even realize it. 
We're living in a world that's dying and they don't even realize it and Jesus is coming back and that message of the gospel has got to be there and it's got to be prevalent. It's got to be, it's got to be in, uh, 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 easily accessible. A lot of popular songs through the years talking about the rapture of the church. You remember this old hymn? Oh, there is going to be a meeting in the air in that sweet, sweet by and by. You all remember that? Good old song. How about this one that the Gaithers was singing? The King is coming, the King is coming. You remember that one? He is, he's coming. Oh, Andre Crouch wrote a song years back. Oh, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Oh, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Oh, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Man, that's the truth. That's the truth. Soon and very soon we are going to see the king. Another, another song through the, through the years, uh, uh, Crystal Lewis made it popular back in the, probably back in the 80s, I guess. People get ready, Jesus is coming, soon we'll be going on. People get ready, Jesus is coming to take away his own. See, man, all kinds of, Songs that have been out there through the ages talking about the coming of Jesus Christ. Hmm. I'm here to remind you of a biblical fact that Satan wants us all to forget. And that fact is that Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, who rose triumphantly, from the grave. Jesus Christ, who even now is seated at the right hand of the throne of God in all of his majesty and power. Jesus Christ, who ascended through the clouds into heaven right before the eyes of the disciples. Jesus Christ, who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That same Jesus is coming again, church. He's coming again. You have our word on it. And you have his word on it. In fact, that word that you're holding in your hands. John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3 says this. I'll just read it with you. It says, My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Even the angels... You even have the angel's word of it and on it. Acts chapter 1, 9 through 11. Read that with me. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood before them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Those were angels that were speaking to those people there. Jesus is coming again. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be next year. It could be five or ten years from now. It, no, no man knows the day or the hour, but Jesus is coming, and he's coming soon. We're closer today than we ever have been, ever before in history, of Jesus' return. If he comes back today, here's the question. Will you go with him? If he comes back today, will you be left behind? Here's some things that I want us to, that I want to share with you this morning that we know for sure about the rapture. Th these are things that we are positive, that we definitely know according to the word of God about the rapture. The first one is this. It will come suddenly. The rapture is going to come suddenly. When Jesus comes, he will come so suddenly, so quickly, it's going to take your breath away. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, read this with me. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed forever. I'm telling you, friends. He's coming suddenly in a split-second moment, in the blink of an eye. You know, was, uh, we're, we're sitting there in the pews today, and, and you're, you're, you don't even realize that you're blinking. But, just, but if you could just take a moment and just kind of concentrate on your blink. How fast is that blink that you blink? I mean, it's just, it's, it's fast. You don't even notice hardly any change whatsoever as you blink, as you're talking to somebody and you're looking at them and you're blinking and, and you don't even realize any type of change. Uh, the Bible says that it, it is in, in a flash, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, suddenly that person that you would be standing there talking to, imagine if you were talking to someone, if I was talking to Cam and all of a sudden, and, and, and just in the blink of an eye, and I blink my eye, one moment he's there, and, and, and just and as fast as that blink took place, and I ro- oh, opened up my eyes, Cam would be gone. Can you imagine? That is fast. It's suddenly. And the Bible says, in the suddenly, in the moment of the twinkling of an eye, he's going to come. First Thessalonians Chapter 5, verse 3, it says this. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. Matthew chapter 24, verse 27 says this. While people are saying... Nope, that's, that's the last one. <laughs> Matthew chapter 24, 27, for as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west so will be the coming of the son of man he's coming suddenly like lightning in the heavens he will appear and be gone a flash a blink gone the sun has come and we've been left behind a few weeks ago we had lightning struck our house and struck our little uh, electric fence that's around the um, the perimeter of the backyard, the, the gated fence that's directly behind our house, and lightning struck one of those wires, melted a space about that far in that wire. Just, I mean, just, just melted. Anyway, it traveled through that, that wire and, and went up to the house and blew the transformer of our little shock, our little dog electrocution type mechanism thing, whatever it is. <laughs> it needs to shock them real hard to get through their heads. But it just blew the transformer out of it. And it wasn't even plugged into the wall. But then it traveled down the wall and, and blew, a, a, blew a, a light bulb out in our laundry room. I'm glad it didn't knock our washer and dryer out that was running at that time. But then it traveled through our camper, which was plugged up, and traveled through that wire. And we later found out that it, just, that it, it has blown the uh, uh, converter in there. So I have to get a new converter uh, of our, it didn't, it didn't, we thought at first it had, it had melted our, uh, you know, uh, ruined our refrigerator and all this other stuff, but it just melted the converter inside there. So we got to get a new converter for our camper, which that's great. That's cheaper than a new refrigerator. <laughs> or as we would do, we just buy an ice chest. <laughs> But it happened so fast. I was sitting there in the laundry room floor, and it sounded like somebody got a mud pie and just threw it against that glass of that window. And then all of a sudden, the lights went out. And it, that, I mean, just in a moment, in a flash, it just took place, and it was gone. There was no getting up and looking and seeing what happened because there was nothing there because it, was just, it happened in a flash. And that's what the Word of God says, that the, that, that, that the, that the coming of the Lord is going to be like. It's going to be like a flash in the moment. It'll, it will happen suddenly. You say, you might be hearing you saying, well, 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 couldn't he at least send a memo or give us some sort of a warning, Pastor? Or, uh, uh, you know, couldn't he, couldn't he just give us a sign that, you know, this, this, these things are, are, are about to take place? He has. He's given us a sign. 
He's giving us a memo. You know what that memo is? Right here. He's telling us. This is the best memo that has been around for, for centuries. And, 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 and it's, it's been around for, for centuries. And, and it, it tells us everything. It tells us that he's coming soon. Everything that I'm sharing with you today, it's telling us right here. This is the memo that he's giving us. This is the warning that he's sharing with us right here. We've got to accept it. We've got to realize he did tell us. He did warn us. We're holding that in our hands. We're reading that memo today. Revelation chapter 22, verse 20. Read that with me. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. What if he came the next second? What if he came before the next heartbeat that we had? What if he came before you had time to even say a prayer? In the flash of a blink of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye, in that amount of time, would you have time to say, Lord, forgive me of all my sins? I want to make things right with you. When it happens, it happens. Some of you may be saying, well, Pastor, you know, this is a scare tactic that you're, you're using today. You're just trying to scare us. No, I'm, I'm preaching the word, my friends. This is the word of God. It cuts like a two-edged sword. It cuts going this way, and it cuts going this way. It's unapologetic. It doesn't apologize for anything that it says. It's not very politically correct whatsoever. You're not going to find anything about... Uh, I'm, no, never mind. I was about to s step on a political soapbox, but I ain't going to do that. <laughs> Don't have time to do that because Jesus is coming. We just got to, get, we just got to make it right with God, Okay. We just gotta we just gotta be right, live right, do what the word of God says. We gotta live for him. And and on top of that, we we need to tell people. We know we, we get so wrapped up in this world, don't we? We get wrapped up in the busyness of this world. We're so busy, we barely have time for God. I raised my hand on that one. Even when we're doing something for the, for the Lord. Sometimes we get so busy doing the work of the Lord that we forget about the Lord of the work. We don't make time for Him. And he's saying, I want to spend time with you. And so often, so many times, and I'm even speaking to, about, my, about myself here. Sometimes I'm, in, I'm more in the Word because I've got three messages to deliver every week. Rather than just reading to build a relationship with Him. And I've got to have that separated. We've got to have that separated. We've got to spend time with God. Here's another thing about the, about the rapture that we know. It will come unexpectedly. So not only is it going to come suddenly, but it's going to come unexpectedly. When Jesus comes, it will catch millions and even billions of people completely by surprise. In Matthew chapter 24, verse, starting with verse 36 through 39, it says this, But about the day or the hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. That's just what I said earlier. As it was written in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Just like any other day. 
Just, just like every other day, people will be in their cars. They'll be traveling to work, going on vacation, may, maybe at work, but, they, but some of them may be still laying in bed. They, they may be getting married, maybe going to parties. Maybe, they may be outside playing with their kids. They may be watching the game or sitting down for a meal or playing golf or going to the mall. And then suddenly, unexpectedly, Jesus will come. One moment people are there, the next blink of an eye, all chaos is going on. People will disappear, leaving piles of clothes and jewelry where they once stood. Swings will still be in motion. after that body leaves until it finally settles down at its resting place. Driverless vehicles will be out of control and crashing into the streets. You're talking about chaos. But that's what will happen. We know that's what will happen because there will be Christians in their cars living for the Lord. They'll be driving down the road, and all of a sudden, boom, they're gone, and their, their car is out of control and crashing wherever, wherever it ends up. And many people out there won't understand what happened. Why? Because we're living, for the most part, in a churchless, in a, in a, in a, in, in a churchless society. There's people in the United States right now that have never heard either that or maybe, maybe a long time ago when they used to go to church, when their grandma used to take them to church when they were kids, you know? Maybe they've heard something about the rapture of the church. Maybe. But it's so far, uh, so far removed away from them that they can't remember. They, don't, they won't know exactly what's going on. And then there's some goofy people out there that believe in UFOs. They're going to think some, some UFO came down and stole millions of people. That's going, probably going to be the government's excuse. <laughs> I won't name any names on that. People will disappear, though. The world will go into utter chaos, caught by complete surprise. And Jesus said it would be that way. Matthew chapter 24, starting with verse 42 through 44. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day the Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would have not let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. I, I know that we, we, we would all think that he's... Uh, some people literally thought that Jesus would come at midnight or come I at night because in some uh, Texas it, 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 would, it would say he's coming like a thief in the night. Uh, and so they, they're saying, well, Jesus is going to come back at night. No, that's not true. He, he's going to come like a thief in the night. Uh, be, and if we understood, if we, knew, if we knew that our house was going to get robbed, we would be ready for it. We'd be sitting there waiting. A number of years ago, we were youth pastoring, and we had a, we had a, we, we, we'd been tipped off that there was a group of kids that were coming to, to roll our house. And uh, they had bought big family-sized bags of toilet paper, and they were going to get our house really good. And we'd been tip, tipped off that they were coming. And so you know what we did? <clears throat> One of us was outside. Was it you? Outside with the... Was, was it me? Outside? <laughs> Laying in the shrubs. I couldn't remember if it was me. I, 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 I might have been inside, I, but I guess I was outside. But I was laying in the shrubs with a water hose ready. <laughs> and I forget, what were you doing? You had silly, okay, she had silly string. And I was laying in the shrubs with a water hose, and, we, and we, we saw them coming. They were walking down the street. They had parked way off, and they were walking down the street. They're on Indian Trail, actually, up here. You see them walking down the street, and they, they were carrying, they had big bags of toilet paper, and they were, they were fixing to do a job. 
we waited until they got ready to throw those rolls, and we just r jumped out with silly, silly string and shocked them with water. They dropped everything they had. And you know something? We racked up on toilet paper. <laughs> Brand new toilet paper. Took it into the house. <laughs> I don't know if they ever found out who, who narked on them, but it was funny. But we expected them. We were ready. We were watching for them. We knew they were coming. And Jesus, in his word, we know that he's coming. We don't know the day or the hour. That's why we've got to be ready at all times. That's why we've got to live for Christ. We've got to live for him. We've got to make him a part of our life. We, we can't just live for him in the... You, you, know why, you know why we need to live for Christ? It's because we've got a world that doesn't know about him. And God's looking for an army to tell people about him. We want to take as many people to heaven with us as we can. Yes, that co-worker of yours that really gets on your nerves that you'd rather slap than, than anything else. <laughs> you'd rather knock his block off but he needs Jesus, don't he? He needs Jesus. I got a friend of mine on Facebook now. We were in school. He, he, looked, like, he looked like a big ogre. I'm telling you, I mean, he was just a big guy. His name was Tim. And, he, and, and I'm serious, he, he was just, he was just a, a huge guy, and he was a bully. And I was scared of him. I mean, he was bigger than me. Uh, and uh, and he, he was a year younger, or uh, he was a grade behind, but I think he was a year older than me. So that tells you kind of where he was at. But anyway. But he was just a big, ogre-looking guy. He and I had words. I didn't like him. Eventually, I, 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 through, through the whole thing, I, I, I invited him to church. He, did, he never did come with me to the youth group. Never did make it. But long story short, I don't know where his life transformed, but he's now a Baptist preacher. I think it's, maybe, I think it's a Baptist church. But he asked me to be his friend on Facebook some time ago. You never know about these people. I, I said all that to say this is because you never know about these people in your life. I, I never thought that Tim would get saved. Of course, I was a kid. He was just, to me, he was just a big ogre bully. Didn't like him. And when I graduated high school, I never saw him again until years later. Somewhere down the line, God touched his heart. And I want to tell you something. God can take the biggest meanest, rudest, ugliest person in the world and he can melt their heart. Amen. He can soften that heart. So that person that you have in mind, it may be a family member, it might be a co-worker, it, whoever it may be, God can melt their heart for him. Don't give up on them. Don't give up on them. I dare you to take a poll of several people this week and ask them if they think Jesus is coming back anytime soon. You, you'll probably get a wide uh, response of, of everything, of their opinion. Watch how many people, some of them may be looking at you as, as nuts. They're not watching, they're not ready. They think the church has been crying wolf about this rapture thing for, for years. Oh, I remember that story. My grandma used to talk about that. He ain't coming back. They, they, they're so far removed from that. But he is coming back. And the more time goes on, the more prophecy has be, is being fulfilled, and the more we can see things wrapping up. You know, before... I'll just be honest with you. Before our last president, 
I never knew how. You know, when the, when, when the, the, the Bible talks about a, a, a one world leader, the Antichrist coming and rising up, and the world will gather around him and follow him. I never thought how that could ever be possible of, the, of, of large groups of people just following blindly a person. And now I can see how it could happen. I can see how people will accept the mark of the beast during that time. Where they, they will no longer be able to buy food or, or, or you know, do any type of transactions. Because now already there are chips that you can put underneath your, underneath your hand. And for those that don't have a hand, you can put them in their forehead. Because you have to have a head to live. You know? That, that technology is out there right now. I wouldn't be surprised if within the next 10 years or so, they're going to start trying to, trying to microchip babies as they're born. Just watch. I never thought we'd be in the place where we are today. In just 8 years, or 10 years, or 15 years, but it slowly progressed. Friends, we, we got to get ready. We got to be watching because Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. I want to stop right here this morning. I, I really expected to be f finished uh, this morning, but I'm not. And we're going to run out of time. Stand with me if you would.